how, and in this programming video, we're going to talk about uh, communication between objects and enca encapsulation. Now, this is an ent entirely theory-based video, and we're, no we're not going to write any code in this video, but it's an important foundational concept, one which I didn't have when I tried to start developing and just wrote, wrote, wrote loads of code with no real idea of how it connects together or anything like that, so that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So, one of the main... Um, Concepts of object oriented programming is encapsulation. That's um, that's one of the squid principles. Uh, 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 objects should 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 be o open but cl but closed to kind of outside influences. Um, and even if you go back in earlier object oriented programming principles, encapsulation has always been one there. So. In object-oriented programming, we we have an object which has certain instance properties, and they 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 describe things about a particular instance for that object. So they describe things about one dog or one um, view controller or one button object. Um, and the idea of enc encapsulation, kind of the single responsibility principle, is that we 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 only want that object to do things that are to do with that object so if we've got a dog object we only we only want it to bark and, and do things that are really re related to a dog object we don't want to just to start doing cat stuff and other stuff because then it makes it more difficult to test more difficult to maintain we want e each of our objects to kind of be, be able to be used on, on its own so how how does this all relate to Encapsulation. Well, the idea, the idea of encapsulation is that there's only certain customization points where someone else, another class, another struct, and another type of object can uh, interact with our, with our, with our object and is kind of on our terms. So, in the Swift context, this might be having a public var, a var that's uh, the default is public. The the um, kind of private means you can only access it within your class, but public means someone else with an instance of that class can set a public var on that instance, and, and that's how we communicate between objects and object oriented programming. We set, we, we give ourselves public vars for things we want to, um, we want to be a, be able. To set and interact with and then from our other objects we 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 only ever set those public vars. For example, one thing that often happens in in I, iOS is if we have a view a, a view controller that displays some data data in a table, we would when when we go into that view controller, we we will get the data the data for it from some other view some some other object but then we would say okay the data for this this um view controller it's a public property because we know we're getting it somewhere else and um, what other types of properties can we have well we can have public functions or more accurately public methods where we where we, we can do a lot of stuff not just uh, not just set a, a value but we can actually uh, execute behavior and um, a lot of uh, methods should really be private but some can be public what are other kind of access levels we we'll talk about private we we'll talk about public there's, there's also this notion in some languages of something called prote prote protected which means I, I can I can access or set this property but but I can't uh, 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 I can I can access this property and subclasses, classes that inherit from me, uh, can set this property, but no other, no other cl classes can. And we, um, we don't have things like that in Swift, which is my programming language of choice. But that's because the developers argue that that conflates kind of access control principles and inherit inheritance principles, which. I think is a good argument. So basically, the moral of the story, communi communication between objects, we have to have 
public vials that we we can set in in on one object to public vials that we can set um on one object from the other object so if I want to segue as called in iOS to another view I need to set what's called my, my model on my initial object uh, um, or, or on on the object that I'm going to so that when I get to that object it knows how to display itself but it's not at any direct inference from the other object because the 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 separate all 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 that first object's given it is the data that it needs to display the data that that, that's unique to its its particular function in kind of older generation program languages the the notion of an instance variable was a thing so we don't set instance variables directly in classes we typically have what are called setter and getter methods which means we have a function to be able to set a, pu a public function function to be, to be able to set a private instance variable and that means the no, no one could go looking with our data we can sort of use the functions to sanitize what's passed in um, another thing i wanted to talk about are we re re read only properties and that's something where well we can get the, we can get the, the data out of it so if if our if the point of our view is to set something just for another view we 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 can get the data out but we, we can't set it in in swift that's called the read only um property um if if, if we if we want to to be able to set a uh, um property privately but get it publicly um so set it within our class but get it from anywhere what what we can do is have a, a private what's called backing variable to uh, that's basically a backstore for the public public variable that they they can set each other so that was a simple ex some simple examples of a kind of object oriented programs um, principles and some kind of examples of, of what it might look like. Uh, so that's a more of the story. Object oriented programming. You don't you don't just have sequences of what you want to do in your program. You work in objects, and each of those objects communicates by setting public properties on itself. So you have to be careful about what you make public. So you don't. Um, you don't kind of conflate responsibilities. You want to think of it as a capsule. It's encapsulated. So each object has got a hard shell around it. And you only want to punch holes in this context. Public properties where where uh, where there's kind of defined behavior and defined reasons why you need to give an object that, that information. So that that was kind of for me what is the key principle of object oriented programming was most difficult and the kind of most abstract to explain. So hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.